Welcome to the second part of Unit 8. In this part, we're going to work two examples. Here again is the table of coefficients of friction because we will need them for the examples. And here is the first example. We have a 1200 kilogram car slamming on its brakes, locking up its wheels and skidding to a stop. We want to know what is the force of friction between the car and the road, and what is the car's acceleration. And I want you to think about it in two scenarios, one where we're on rubber with dry concrete, and the other one where it's rubber with wet concrete. If we go back to the table, we can see that those are the top two sets of coefficients of friction. And in this case, we are moving, so we are going to want kinetic friction. When it's on dry concrete, it's 0.7. When it's on wet concrete, it's 0.5. So in this case, mu k is 0.7. And in the second case, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.5. This is a Newton's law problem. So we should proceed in solving them just like we have been for the last couple of units. First thing is I like to draw a picture. So here's my car, it's got some initial velocity, it's going to lock its brakes up, which means its acceleration is going to be in the opposite direction. And sometimes later, it is not moving. It skids to a stop. If I now draw the free body diagram of my car, I have a normal from the road on the car. I have gravity acting downward, and then I have friction between the road and the car, pointing in the same direction as the acceleration to slow it down. As I like to do, I like to let the direction that is positive match the direction of the acceleration. It makes it a little bit easier. And the first thing I'm going to do, which will be valid for both parts, is I'm going to look at the vertical direction because I need to get a value for the normal force in order to plug into the frictional force. In the vertical direction, I have no acceleration, so it doesn't really matter which force I write first here, but I take everything in one direction in this case, the normal force, subtract off everything in the other direction, the weight, which gives me, in this case, that the normal force on the car equals the car's weight, but that equals mg, so that's 1,200 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and if you multiply that out, you get 11,760 newtons. I'm now going to look at the horizontal direction. So F net in the horizontal direction or the x direction will be max. The only force I have in the horizontal direction is the frictional force. That's mass times acceleration. I'm going to rewrite my frictional force in terms of the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal. And so now I can write an expression for the acceleration is the coefficient of friction times the normal force divided by the mass. The other thing I need for this problem is I just need this step. So I'm going to make a little note that FRC is mu k times nrc. For part a, mu k equaled uh, 0 0.7, as we found from the table. And that means that frc equals 0 0.7 multiplied by 11,760 newtons, or in other words, 8,232 newtons. And I can get the acceleration by taking, um, this is the force of friction, mu k times n. 
uh, and dividing by the mass, so 8,232 newtons divided by 1,200 kilograms. I will write that all out in long form for the, you, though. 1,200 kilograms. And if you put that all in, you get an acceleration of 6.86 meters per second squared. Part B, the coefficient of kinetic friction was 0.5 in the table. So doing the exact same thing, I get the force of friction is 0.5 times 11,760 newtons, or in other words, 5,880 newtons. And the acceleration will be 0 0.5 times 11,760 newtons. Really should put my commas in. Divided by 1,200 kilograms. And that works out to be 4.9 meters per second squared. Okay. This concludes our first example. Our second example is an example of moving a room around. So you have a fairly large wooden cabinet, 45 kilograms, and it's sitting on a wooden floor. And you need to push it to a new location. So what we have is a wooden cabinet on a wooden floor. If we go back to our table, we see that that is this set of numbers. So the coefficient of static friction is 0.5 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. So let's make a note of that. Coefficient of static friction was 0.5. Coefficient of kinetic friction was 0.3. And again, I like to start by drawing myself a pretty picture. So here's my cabinet. Here's me pushing on it. Um, that's about all I know for that, but I can draw my free body diagram. So I have the normal uh, from the floor on the cabinet, the cabinet's weight, the normal force from the person, or I've been saying me, but that works, person on the cabinet, and the normal for, oh, not the normal force, the frictional force between the floor and the cabinet. And notice the subscripts on this guy and the subscripts on that normal force match up. So that's the one that I want to plug in. I'm going to use a standard XY coordinate system. And I'm going to begin my analysis by looking at um, the vertical direction. I don't know if I did it, but there's um, three questions being asked here. How much force is needed to get it moving? How much force is needed to keep it moving at a constant speed? And then assuming it is moving at 0.3 meters per second, how quickly does it come to a stop if you stop pushing on it? So working on the first question, so question one, uh, the force that it takes to get it moving, that is asking for the maximum value of static friction. To find that, begin by looking in the vertical direction. There is no acceleration in the vertical direction, so we're going to let that be zero which means in this case, the normal force again equals the weight force, which equals mg, or in other words, 45 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And 45 times 9.8 is 441 newtons. I can now look at the vertical direction. Oh, sorry, not vertical, horizontal. Um, this thing, uh, this cabinet is not moving, therefore um, it doesn't really matter which uh, force I let be in the positive direction. So I'm going to go with F net X is M A X. I have the normal from the person on the cabinet minus the friction between the floor and the cabinet has to equal zero because it's not 
moving, not accelerating in this case, which tells me that the normal from the person on the cabinet has to equal the force of friction, which is the coefficient of static friction times the normal between the floor and the cabinet, which in this case was 0.5 multiplied by 441 newtons, which is 220.5 newtons. So you have to push with at least 220.5 newtons in order to get this cabinet to move. The second question wants to know, um, not that, What is the force you have to push with, assuming that the acceleration is still zero, but moving? That changes our friction from being uh, static friction to kinetic friction. It does not affect the vertical direction at all. And in the horizontal direction, it makes only one very subtle change. So we still have that the normal from the person on the cabinet minus the force of friction on the cabinet equals zero, which tells me that the normal from the person on the cabinet is the force of friction, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction because we're now moving times the normal from the floor on the cabinet, which is 0 0.3 times 441 newtons, which is 132.3 newtons. So it takes 220.5 newtons to get it moving, but once it is moving, it only takes 132.3 newtons to keep it moving. Okay. The last part of this problem is saying, hey, it's moving, but you stop pushing, therefore, the forces are no longer going to be balanced and um, it's going to have an acceleration. So for the third part, we have a new free body diagram. We still have the normal from the floor on the cabinet. We have the cabinet's weight and we still have the force of friction. Nothing has changed in the vertical direction. So just as before, we find that this equals 441 newtons, which means this equals 441 newtons. In the horizontal direction, things have changed, and I now have an acceleration. I can solve for that acceleration by taking and using Newton's second law, plugging in the only force I have remaining horizontally, and so the acceleration in the horizontal direction will be the force of friction, which is going to be mu k times nfc divided by the mass. It's still moving, so that's 0.3 times 441 newtons divided by the mass, which was 45 kilograms in the problem statement. And that tells me the acceleration is 2.94 meters per second squared. So I know the acceleration, but that's not what the question was asking. The question was how long, if you look, how quickly does it come to a stop? So it's asking for a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this acceleration is constant. And what I have is the cabinet moving at 0.3 meters per second. Sometimes later, it is not moving any longer. This spot is going to be my x equals zero spot. This is some unknown x. This one occurred at t equals zero. This one occurs at an unknown time. I don't know it. Um, and here is the acceleration. And because it's slowing down, it has to point to the left since I let the velocity equal the right, or let the velocity be to the right. And this acceleration I know has a value of 2.94 meters per second squared because I just found it. 
I can now write my grocery list. Uh, initial position, I was able to let equal to zero. Initial velocity was given at 0.3 meters per second. Final velocity is zero because it comes to a stop. Acceleration will be a negative 2.94 meters per second squared. Assuming for this part that positive is to the right. And T is what I want to know. The easiest way to find the velocity, or, sorry, to find the time is to use the velocity equation. So V equals V naught plus AT. So zero meters per second equals 0 0.3 meters per second minus 2.94 meters per second squared times time, or in other words, T is going to be 0.3 meters per second divided by 2.94 meters per second squared. And if you multiply that all out, it works out to be 0.1 seconds, a tenth of a second. Um, as an aside, as one final little bit, an additional question I could ask about this is how far does it travel? And for that, we'd want to use the uh, x equals x naught equation. And if you plug everything in there, the initial velocity of 0.3 meters per second, the acceleration of 2.94 meters per second squared in the negative direction, uh, time of 0.1 seconds, then you get in this entire adventure that it moves 0 0.0153 meters, or in other words, 1.5 centimeters. This concludes this portion of unit eight. In the next unit, we will work two, uh, not in the next unit, in the next part, we will work two additional examples.